This is 3 News Daily. Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Daily on this Tuesday, January 24th. I'm Stephanie Haney here with your top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. And I want to start by letting you know I've been overhearing what they're working on in the Weather Center. It sounds like we've got some snow coming in over the next 24 hours. That's why the National Weather Service has issued winter weather alerts for Northeast Ohio. So you're going to want to make sure you head to WKYC.com. Our meteorologist Peyton Domsky has been on it today, so she'll give you everything you need to know. Just head to the website to check that out so you can be prepared for what's coming tomorrow. Now developing out of Indiana this afternoon, classified documents were found at former Vice President Mike Pence's home. A representative for Pence sent a letter to the National Archives last week detailing the situation, and the letter says that the documents were, quote, inadvertently boxed and transported to Pence's home at the end of former President Donald Trump's presidency. The letter stressed that Pence did not know that they were there. Now to an update for you from the plane crash in Geauga County last Wednesday. We now know the name of the inmate who was being flown to a prison. 67-year-old Carl Lee Jaspersy, also known as Dandy Daddy. He's serving a 102-month prison term for distribution and possession of child sexual abuse material. The plane was carrying Jaspersy, the pilot, and four law enforcement officers, and it made an emergency landing near the Geauga County Airport in Middlefield last week after engine trouble. We can report that no one was seriously hurt. Now, today is day two of the racketeering trial against former Ohio House Speaker Larry Householder and lobbyist Matt Borges. Day one was chaotic at times in the courtroom. The federal judge in the case scolded Householder's defense team twice, first for interrupting and rudely clicking pens, making faces and talking during the prosecution's opening arguments. And again, when the defense went through Householder's family life and career history, leading the judge to ask the lawyers when they'd be getting to actual evidence. Now, Householder seemed happy to be there, calling it Redemption Day and talking about how difficult it was to wait to talk about his side of the story. Now, today we'll see the start of the prosecution's case against Householder. I'll be going into detail on what happens each day in court in our 4 p.m. and our 6 p.m. shows this week. And then later this week, I'll have a special edition of Legally Speaking for you. And that's where we'll break down what we know from guilty pleas, admissions and other lawsuits against First Energy. All right, let's turn to health news now. Cleveland's city council is considering an ordinance that would wipe out medical debts for almost 50,000 residents. This is a measure that was introduced at last night's council meeting, and it proposes to take almost $2 million in American Rescue Plan funds to buy more than $100 million in medical debt, and then they would just forgive that debt. The proposal now goes to the Council's Health, Human Services, and the Arts Committee. Our Carmen Blackwell will have more details on this story for us tonight. And the city of Rittman is now scrambling to try and figure out what to do after overtaxing residents for the last 15 years. Three News received the letter sent out to residents where city officials say they recently discovered they've been collecting municipal income taxes at the rate of 1.5% when they were only authorized to collect at 1%. So that's a half a percentage point from the people in that area for 15 years. You can tell that would add up. So town leaders are now saying that they're trying to figure out an option to pay people back that will not bankrupt the city. It's a tough spot to be in. Now in the city of Shaker Heights, there is a new police chief. Officer Wayne Hudson is taking over for Jeffrey DeMuth, who spent more than 30 years on the force. Prior to this, Hudson served as deputy sheriff with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office in Nebraska. Hudson says he plans to work on bringing down the rate of property crime in the city and also building better connections with the community. Now, Amazon is dabbling into something new. It's growing its health care business and adding a prescription drug discount program. The company announced today that it will be launching what's called RX Pass. It's a subscription service for customers who have Amazon Prime memberships. And Amazon said people can pay $5 a month to fill prescriptions from a list of about 50 generic medications. The company said that flat fee could cover medications like the antibiotic amoxicillin and the anti-inflammatory drug naproxen. We have the full details on this, what we know so far, up on WKYC.com. 
All right, now there is some drama coming from yet another classic 80s movie, but this time it is not in Cleveland. We're not talking about the Christmas Story house here. We're in Astoria, Oregon, where Goonies superfan Bayman Zachary bought the home featured in the movie, bought it just last month. He's been welcoming other fans with open arms, letting people tour the house, but one neighbor is not having it. The neighbor put a sign on their house that says Goonies are not welcome. Their issue is with all of the traffic, but Bayman does have some backup. Another neighbor put up their own sign that says ignore Karen. I don't know if that woman's name is actually Karen, but if it is, it's a pretty on point sign. Now in other news, the search is on to find who stole Terry Francona's iconic scooter. It was stolen from his home over the weekend. You know Francona is legendary for being spotted by fans riding at home after games at Progressive Field. So much so that the Guardians had a bottlehead of Francona riding his scooter as a game day giveaway. So you know we got to get that scooter back. Listen, whoever has it, just send it back. No harm, no foul. I mean, I'm not speaking for Francona, but I know everybody loves seeing him on that scooter, so hopefully he gets it back. All right, thank you very much for being here with us on this Tuesday edition of 3 News Daily. Remember, you can catch this live if you'd like to. That's on 3, also on your Fire TV and Roku apps. We're live at 122 and 152. We will be back tomorrow with more of your top stories from Northeast Ohio. We'll see you then.